This is the new Noble Chairs Legend, their latest and greatest chair. Seeing as how I've reviewed one of every model they've released, I think that it's worth a look at well, what's new here. Unsurprisingly, the unboxing and build experience is pretty similar to the rest of their line. It comes well packaged and actually doesn't need that much construction overall. It does come with the tools you'll need, and even spare bolts and screws, but seeing as I have a worryingly large collection of my own tools, I'll be using those instead. You will need to attach the second armrest. Uh, that comes separate in the box. The bolts for it though come in the seat base itself, so you need to remove them first, then install it. You'll then want to attach all of the caster wheels to the sort of star base and then drop the gas cylinder and it sort of covers in the hole in the center. You'll then want to bolt the tilt mechanism to the seat, the right way around of course, and then you push on the two handles and drop the seat base and tilt mechanism onto the gas cylinder. You'll need to remove the bolts from the seat back, and then you can slide it between the sort of two forks and screw them back in, attach the plastic side covers, remove the new lockout screw for the rear sort of re reclining tilt mechanism. Uh, it's actually nice and shiny red, and then you're good to go. Design-wise, they've opted to make the legend even more tame. Gone are the, the racing seat wings and the ultra-tight bolsters, although the cutout or in the neck area still persists. They've also chosen to enlarge the headrest area, making it more like the like head and neck pillow is actually sort of built in, although you do still get both a uh, sort of neck pillow and a lumbar pillow if you'd fancy. I still think that uh, I'm going to use this with this chair personally, it's, it's not quite deep enough to call it a, a proper head pillow, but it's still nice enough. The backrest is equally a touch loose on me, again allowing for wider frames to, to fit nicely, and also the seat base is incredibly flat, which again works well for the, the wider frame. Features wise of course you get the usual adjustment of things like tilt for the uh, the entire seat base with a handful of locking positions ranging from basically flat to uh, basically falling over backwards. Although speaking of that, despite being fully reclined on the base and fully reclined on the uh, the rear adjustment, which of course you do have, actually, and actually my 110 kilogram lump on it, I had no problems with this being balanced, which is quite impressive. Beyond the tilt adjustment, you can of course raise and lower the chair and make full use of the adjustable armrests, which include forward and backwards, twisting left and right, sliding to be wider or more narrow, and of course up and down too. What's a little more special though is the adjustable lumbar supports with this dial on the side. This is now a sort of ratchetless design as in it's a, a smooth turning knob instead of a, a clicky one which actually I kind of like and of course adjusts the uh, lumbar support at the back outwards or inwards depending on how you turn it. Moving on to the, the quality and material, I went with the fabric version, the TX version, which is definitely my preference as it's always soft and comforting even on bare skin, especially on a, a hot day, but if you would prefer faux leather or even the real stuff, that is available right now too. Build quality is always great on these. The stitching looks fantastic, everything is well fitted, and there's a proper metal frame inside of here, as well as firm but supportive foam, and the fabric material is it's just fantastic. It's soft and not scratchy at all, and it's the right balance of warm and comforting, but also kind of cool and clean. The only problem I had with the build quality here was that the backrest made a, a kind of popping noise. You can hear it there. It's it's not the end of the world. It, it does kind of cave in a little bit as you sit down on it, but it's it's not a massive problem, but it's not exactly ideal. Luckily, after reporting the issue, they shipped me a replacement entire backrest, or actually a replacement chair, and I'm sending this one back. Uh, but it's all good, and so I'm, uh, I'll be fitting this very shortly, and uh, yeah, 
That's, uh, that's good to, to have uh, no questions asked. Speaking of comforts, I definitely enjoy sitting in this. The flat bottom makes, it kind of works well for me, especially as, uh, well, I like to sit with kind of one leg up, but under my other leg, uh, and also my um, thunder thighs tend to take up quite a, lo a lot of room in the more sort of supportive chairs. Uh, the backrest fits my torso pretty well. There's actually enough room for me to like slightly maneuver my position, which is great for comfort and while still, you know, not catching myself on any big lumps or anything, and so I'm, I'm definitely happy with that. And of course, it's nicely supporting as well. One thing to note is that, at least for my preferred seating position and my um, somewhat unusually shaped body, the lumbar support that's built in is just a little too high for me. I'm sure that it's probably the same height as in the Hero that I've been using for over a year now, but this one just seems a little more pronounced, even on its most relaxed setting. Whereas I think the, the Hero is a touch smoother, which ends up being a little bit more comfortable for me personally. Of course, almost everything that I'm talking about here is subjective and your mileage may in fact probably will vary. So take everything that I'm saying here, at least the subjective stuff, with a pinch of salt. One thing I can attest to though is the longevity, especially now that I've had the Hero TX chair for over a year and various of the other models for multiple. The full leather chairs that I have have all shown no signs of wear. They all look practically brand new. Uh, they aren't cracked or, or torn or peeling. They aren't even scuffed or scratched. The Hero TX equally looks brand new. It doesn't look like I'm wearing through the fabric at all, there's, there's no scratches, holes or cuts. And to make it clear, I sit in one of these every day for a worrying amount of time, sometimes with shoes on while doing this whole tucking my foot under one leg type thing, or actually even catching it on various remarkably sharp things like the vice jaws that I keep on my desk for soldering. So um, yeah, long story short, I feel pretty confident in saying that these chairs will definitely last you. So to wrap up, I do like the Legend. It's a great, even more subtle design with a good selection of features. It's well built, has good support, both lumbar and uh, after sales, <laughs> and uh, I think it offers a pretty decent amount of comfort too. I think I will end up switching back to my Hero TX personally as my um figure uh, prefers that style, but I'm more than happy to recommend this if you prefer a more subtle and open design. And I will still be using this as my benchmarking sort of desk chair, so uh, it's not like this thing is going far. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the, the Noble Chairs Legend? Is it a chair that you'd pick up yourself? If so, which version would you pick up? The, the TX like this one, the full leather or the real leather? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to check out the uh, the Legend series chairs, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. That will likely be an Overclock UK affiliate link, uh, as those are the people who sent me it. I suppose via Noble Chairs, essentially. Um, but that's kind of that, really. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to see more chair reviews, well, I've got plenty on the channel already. And if you want to see more normal tech reviews, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to support me rambling to a camera every day, then you can hit the uh, subscribe button and check out the links in the description or even become a YouTube member if you fancy some perks to go along with that. But yeah, that's kind of it, really. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.